everyone, hope you're doing well. In today's video, I'm going to cover the second class that I took this past semester, uh, the semester being the fall 2020 semester. So this video is going to be dedicated to CS6603, AI, Ethics, and Society, offered by Georgia Tech's Online Masters in Computer Science program. This is a relatively new course at Georgia Tech. This past semester, it was only the third semester of it being offered at Georgia Tech, and its course number was formerly a CS8803 special topics number, but it now has its own official number at CS6603. Before we get started, let's take a look at the summary statistics on omscentral.com so we can get a general feel of how others feel about this course. Its difficulty rating is 1.67, and that makes it among one of the easiest classes available in this program. The average workload 6.5 hours a week, which again is very light compared to the average for this program, and the average rating is 3.5, which is pretty middle of the road, not great, not horrible, and if I were to rate it right now, I'd probably rate it around 3 out of 5 um, for reasons that I'll get into later. This course is not a programming heavy course and doesn't go super deep into the actual AI techniques being used today. However, I think the general idea of the course is just to make you think and be cognizant of the ethical implications of using data in AI, and a good portion of the year is focused on that in an AI context. As for the instructional team, I was fortunate in the fact that Dr. Ayana Howard ran the class. Uh, she is the one who created the class and created the lectures. However, I know that she just accepted a new role at The Ohio State University as the Dean at the College of Engineering. So I know she's leaving Georgia Tech, but this course will still be offered. I think they're just going to keep using the same pre-recorded lectures, just with a different instructor uh, running the day-to-day -day activities of the class. There aren't any prerequisites for this class, and you don't actually program that much for this class since a decent amount of the homework assignments are writing assignments. However, you do have to program a decent amount for some of the projects. It's not required that you do them in Python, though it seems highly encouraged since the support on Piazza and a couple of the additional supplemental materials are in Python. So if I were to take this class, I would definitely recommend brushing up on your Python skills a little bit. I think it's true that you don't really need any prerequisites, but if you do have some experience working with machine learning algorithms and actually training a classifier, it would definitely help because one of my complaints about the class is you kind of just superficially do these things, but you don't actually know what you're doing if you don't have any machine learning background. Lectures are light, they're not super technical, so they're pretty easy to watch. And if you really wanted to, you could hunker down, put it on two times speed and watch all the lectures in one day if you really wanted to. I took the route of just watching maybe 30 minutes every weekend and I thought it worked out fine. There is a textbook for this class, but the textbook is definitely not an actual textbook. It's just a normal book. It's called Weapons of Math Destruction. It's a very easy read, pretty interesting, and I would recommend reading it, though you don't actually need to read it since none of the, none of the homeworks, none of the projects directly reference it. So it's more supplemental in my opinion. I found it to be very, very easy to get a high A in this class and the grading policy is as follows. Homework projects are 40% of your grade, written critiques are 10% of your grade, the midterm is 10%, final project 15%, final 10%, class discussion slash exercises 15%, and this is all on the standard 10 point letter grade scale. Homework for the class is pretty light. You can kind of break it down into two categories. One is written critiques, which are like these two page reports that you write after doing some exercise. You're, there are questions that you have to answer and you just answer the questions in prose form and two pages is not long at all, so I would say they're pretty easy. Class discussions slash exercises are the other category and that's also pretty easy. The only difference is A, they're not as long and B, you're answering them on the class discussion section of Canvas and then you're required to respond to two other students to get full credit, so it's more of a class forum type situation. Projects make up 40% of your grade, and I think this is an area that this class can be improved a lot. I kind of feel like the amount of time that you put into the projects doesn't really equate well to the educational value that you get when you complete the projects. And on top of that, the project's instructions are not really well worded and unclear to me, so I was frustrated in that. Lots of times I had to go to Piazza to see what 
was the actual correct way to do things or I had to go back and change things because I saw a Piazza post. But it is only the third semester in this class and I'm sure they will improve over time. The first project is a social media project where you manually pull the data from whatever social media platform you use. You go through and sort all the information that they deduce about you. So I use Facebook and they have all sorts of information um, about you that they can use for targeted ads and you manually go through and sort them into different buckets and then you create a, da a data flow diagram to visualize this. Again, I thought this was pretty tedious and the only real takeaway is kind of like a shock value thing. So you're like, wow, these social media platforms know a lot about me. And I felt like the amount of time that it took to manually do all this and sort it wasn't really worth the general moral of the story, which is just that social media platforms are using your data to their advantage to sell to advertisers. The next project is called Stats 101 and it's basically a programming warm up. You don't have to do it in Python, but they say you can either turn in the homeworks as PDF or Jupyter Notebooks. So I took it as a Pandas Python Jupyter Notebooks programming warm up. Essentially, you just use select data sets that they provide for you and you explore and visualize relationships. Again, like the last project, I found it to be very tedious because you have to make so many charts just saying the relationship between different variables and you make so many different graphs. It's very time consuming for not too much value. Next up is AI slash ML. There are two parts. The first part of the project is just doing some basic steps that are useful for machine learning projects like creating test and train data sets, calculating summary statistics, correlation coefficients, etc. It's definitely good practice and along the way you're visualizing these things with matplotlib. So it's good practice. It was definitely a little bit tedious at times, but in general, I think it was a useful exercise. In part two of the AI slash ML project, you use a pre-trained word to vec model and you go through and calculate the different similarity measures between certain words. And these different target words relate to different protected classes. And then the second part is using the UTK face dataset for facial recognition. And we basically just analyze that data set and explore the differing amounts of representations for different genders and races. It's not a hard project and I found it to be interesting and it didn't take long at all. The next project we did is called Fairness and Bias and this project just didn't really work out for me. We we're supposed to assign a credit score to each credit applicant and then set a threshold to approve or deny someone a loan based off that credit score threshold. This just didn't really work out for me since this class doesn't teach us anything about ML, so I had no good way of predicting credit score off someone's information. And then when we were asked to mitigate bias, I didn't really have any bias since my credit score didn't accurately predict someone's credit worthiness, so there was no bias. It kind of arbitrarily treated everyone the same. I didn't get penalized grade-wise for it, but it made this exercise kind of useless. The final project was very similar to the last project, except you use your own data set that you choose, you train the classifier, evaluate it for bias, then take steps to mitigate that bias. Again, I was kind of annoyed since this is a non-technical class with no prerequisites, and I had to learn how to train a classifier using scikit-learn myself, but the outcomes were pretty good and I was happy with the results of this project. For exams, the midterm is 10% of your grade, and it's really easy. There's no need to study for it. You pretty much are just going through different scenarios, pointing out potential sources of bias, looking at graphs, pointing out where they're misleading, stuff like that. The final exam isn't an actual exam. It's just a take home assignment. So you're asked to find a current event article that relates to AI misuse in some regulated domain. And then you analyze it, write about the bias, the quantifiable metrics, um, sources of bias, etc and you close off with suggestions of ways to mitigate that bias. In closing, I did like this class, but I do think it leaves a lot to be desired. I definitely recommend pairing this class with another class because this class on its own isn't very stimulating. I think my biggest gripes for this class, as a non-technical class, it doesn't teach you how to actually apply any ML techniques, but then in the projects, it kind of makes the assumption that you do know how to apply those techniques. On top of that, they can be kind of tedious for the projects and the wording unclear, so the Piazza question and answer threads were super long, but the TAs were very responsive and I'm sure this will be assuaged as the class continues to iterate. Overall, I did like this class and I'm glad I took it and that's my general review.